Epistolary novel is a novel written as a series of letters. The term is often extended to cover novels which intersperse documents of other kinds with the letters, most commonly diary entries and newspaper clippings, and sometimes considered to include novels composed of documents even if they don't include letters at all. More recently, epistolaries may include electronic documents such as recordings and radio, blog posts, and emails. The word epistolary is derived from Latin from the Greek word epistol epistol, meaning a letter, see epistle. In German, this type of novel is known as a brief Roman. The epistolary form can add greater realism to a story, because it mimics the workings of real life. It is thus able to demonstrate differing points of view without recourse to the device of an omniscient narrator. An important strategic device in the epistolary novel for creating the impression of authenticity of the letters is the fictional editor. There are two theories on the genesis of the epistolary novel. The first claims that the genre is originated from novels with inserted letters, in which the portion containing the third-person narrative in between the letters was gradually reduced. The other theory claims that the epistolary novel arose from miscellanies of letters and poetry, some of the letters were tied together into a mostly amorous plot. Both claims have some validity. The first truly epistolary novel, the Spanish, Prison of Love, Carcel de Amor, circa 1485 by Diego de San Pedro, belongs to a tradition of novels in which a large number of inserted letters already dominated the narrative. Other well-known examples of early epistolary novels are closely related to the tradition of letter books and miscellanies of letters. Within the successive editions of Edmé Borsalt's Letters of Respect, Gratitude and Love Lettre de Respect, De Obligation et de Mort, 1669, a group of letters written to a girl named Babet were expanded and became more and more distinct from the other letters, until it formed a small epistolary novel entitled Letters to Babet, Lettre A Babet. The immensely famous letters of a Portuguese nun, Letra Portuguesa, 1669, generally attributed to Gabriel Joseph de Laverne, Comte de Guierigues, though a small minority still regard Mariana Alcoforado as the author, is claimed to be intended to be part of a miscellany of Guierigues' prose and poetry. The founder of the epistolary novel in English is said by many to be James Howell 1594-1666 with Familiar Letters, 1645-50, who writes of prison, foreign adventure, and the love of women. Perhaps first work to fully utilize the potential of an epistolary novel was love letters between a nobleman and his sister. This work was published anonymously in three volumes, 1684, 1685, and 1687, and has been attributed to Afra Ben though its authorship remains disputed in the 21st century. 8. The novel shows the generous results of changing perspectives. Individual points were presented by the individual characters, and the central voice of the author and moral evaluation disappeared, at least in the first volume. Further volumes introduced a narrator. The author furthermore explored a realm of intrigue with complex scenarios such as letters that fall into the wrong hands, faked letters, or letters withheld by protagonists. The epistolary novel as a genre became popular in the 18th century in the works of such authors as Samuel Richardson, 
with his immensely successful novels Pamela, 1740, and Clarissa, 1749. John Cleland's early erotic novel Fanny Hill, 1748, is written as a series of letters from the titular character to an unnamed recipient. In France, there was Lettre per Saints, 1721, by Montesquieu, followed by Julie, O.U. La Nouvelle Eloise, 1761, by Jean-Jacques Rousseau, and Choderlos de la Close Les Liaisons d'Angarouses, 1782, which used the epistolary form to great dramatic effect, because the sequence of events was not always related directly or explicitly. In Germany, there was Johann Wolfgang von Goethe's The Sorrows of Young Werther, Die Leiden des Jungen Werther, 1774, and Friedrich Holderlin's Hyperion. The first Canadian novel, The History of Emily Montague, 1769, by Francis Brooke, 9, and 20 years later the first American novel, The Power of Sympathy, 1789, by William Hill Brown, were both written in epistolary form. Starting in the 18th century, the epistolary form was subject to much ridicule, resulting in a number of savage burlesques. The most notable example of these was Henry Fielding's Shamila, 1741, written as a parody of Pamela. In it, the female narrator can be found wielding a pen and scribbling her diary entries under the most dramatic and unlikely of circumstances. Oliver Goldsmith used the form to satirical effect in The Citizen of the World, subtitled, Letters from a Chinese Philosopher Residing in London to His Friends in the East, 1760-61. So did the diarist Fanny Burney in a successful comic first novel, Evelina, 1788. The epistolary novel slowly became less popular after 18th century. Although Jane Austen tried the epistolary in juvenile writings in her novella Lady Susan, 1794, she abandoned this structure for her later work. It is thought that her lost novel First Impressions, which was redrafted to become Pride and Prejudice, may have been epistolary. Pride and Prejudice contains an unusual number of letters quoted in full and some play a critical role in the plot. The epistolary form nonetheless saw continued use, surviving in exceptions or in fragments in 19th century novels. In Honoré de Balzac's novel Letters of Two Brides, two women who became friends during their education at a convent correspond over a 17-year period, exchanging letters describing their lives. Mary Shelley employs the epistolary form in her novel Frankenstein, 1818. Shelley uses the letters as one of a variety of framing devices, as the story is presented through the letters of a sea captain and scientific explorer attempting to reach the North Pole who encounters Victor Frankenstein and records the dying man's narrative and confessions. Published in 1848, Anne Bronte's novel The Tenant of Wildfell Hall is framed as a retrospective letter from one of the main heroes to his friend and brother-in-law with the diary of the eponymous tenant inside it. In the late 19th century, Bram Stoker released one of the most widely recognized and successful novels in the epistolary form to date, Dracula. Printed in 1897, the novel is compiled entirely of letters, diary entries, newspaper clippings, telegrams, doctor's notes, ship's logs, and the like.